Judas Iscariot, son of Simon Iscariot, is famous for one of the worst betrayals in history. He committed what some consider to be the gravest of sins. With a kiss, he sealed the fate of the Son of Man. One of the twelve disciples, but unlike his fellow peers, he is not remembered for having saved 3,000 souls in a day, raising the dead, or healing the sick. Why did he do it? What could have possibly motivated him? Is it just greed as some say? Or was there more to it? If it was truly Jesus' destiny to die for us, then did Judas even have a choice in what he would do? Today, we will be talking about Judas Iscariot, son of Simon Iscariot, friend, disciple, and ultimately, the betrayer. Interestingly, the name Judas is derived from the Hebrew word Judah, which means praise or let the Lord, God, be praised. This is fascinating especially when you consider the direction his life took. Surnamed Iscariot which means the false one or liar, the version of him many people today are more familiar with. The Gospel of John tells us he was the disciples treasurer, carrying their money and often stealing from it as he is described in the scriptures as not being a man of character. From this, it could be said that his actions were purely motivated by greed, but could that be all? If we really think about it, why would a disciple, one of the closest men to Jesus Christ at the time, who had seen all the miracles firsthand, give up his master for a few pieces of silver, as it's stated in the book of Matthew? Described as a shrewd and untrustworthy man by many accounts, some even going as far as questioning how he could ever have become a disciple. Lack of judgment on the Son of God? We think not. Maybe everything was predetermined from the very beginning. In other words, Judas Iscariot might have never had a choice to be anything other than what he is known for today. According to the book of Matthew and John, his motivations were purely one of greed. But the Gospel of Luke disagrees and says his actions were a result of being possessed by Satan. Judas was one of twelve sent out by Jesus to preach the word with the power to heal the sick and cast off demons. It begs the question of how one with such anointing was possessed by the devil. Which brings us back to a particular theory of Judas having no choice from the very start. Some wild theories say that maybe in some way the blame lies with Jesus Christ. Looking back in the scriptures, we can see in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 21, that Jesus says to his disciples during the famous Last Supper, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And when Judas asked, Master, is it I? Jesus told him that he had answered his own question. Perhaps it was this blatant lack of faith of the master and his disciple that pushed Judas to go through with the betrayal. We cannot truly know. Although his name is today associated with traitor and backstabber, not all religions portray him as such. In Islamic literature, Judas is not necessarily a traitor, but instead it is said that he supposedly lied to the Jews in order to defend Jesus, who was not crucified. Although this is different from the popular Christian portrayal, we are focusing on the man and his depiction throughout history not the religion. What makes the betrayal of Judas so interesting is how he was chosen after a season of intense prayers. Luke 6, 12-13 One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he also designated apostles. Judas, as we know him today, was among the twelve chosen apostles, names of which are listed in the 16th verse of the same Luke chapter 6. On a dark night in the garden of Gethsemane, with a heavy heart, Jesus prayed to his father, asking that if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. A moment of fleshly weakness for the Son of Man, not wanting to go through what he knew was about to happen. After the third time of praying this prayer, according to the Gospel of Matthew, Judas came, and with him a multitude of men with swords, and the chief priests and elders of the synagogue. And with a kiss on the cheek of Jesus of Nazareth, Judas Iscariot, 
sealed his faith as history's most famous traitor. However, by identifying Jesus to the Jewish authorities, Judas set in motion a chain of events that would become the cornerstones of the Christian faith. Jesus' arrest, trial, crucifixion, and eventually resurrection, known collectively as the Passion of Christ. Upon the identification of their Lord, one of the disciples drew a sword and cut off one of the ears of the high priest's servant, named Malchus. Matthew does not mention who, but according to the book of Luke and John, chapter 18, verse 10, it is stated that it was Simon Peter who did this act. Jesus, having already accepted his fate, stopped Peter, saying, The cup which my Father has given me, shall I not drink it? And thus Jesus was taken away in chains, having been betrayed by one of his very own, sent by Annas to Caiaphas the high priest. Once one of the respected twelve disciples, now thousands of years later, his name is synonymous with backstabbers and disloyal men. There are many accounts of what happened after that night. According to Matthew 27, 3-10, he was consumed by guilt after seeing Jesus condemned to death. He ran to the chief priests, crying about how he had sinned and tried to return the silver he had been given, but he was ultimately laughed at. In despair, racked with guilt, and having no idea what to do, he hanged himself. Another account in the book of Acts says he bought a field with the reward of his treachery, and one day he fell headlong in the middle and all his bowels gushed out, implying that he threw himself rather than dying accidentally. In some ways, it is the same as the account of Matthew. The field which he bought is regarded as the field of blood. Other popular accounts state that he remained unrepentant and was ultimately punished by God for his actions. It was said that he became bloated, covered in warts and boils. He could not walk through places that wagons could go through and ultimately died in a graveyard. The stench of his body was so great that people avoided the area, leaving him to rot. Now that we have discussed what happened to his body, let us talk about what was left, his soul. Popularized religious texts such as the Bible, the Quran, and the records of Gilgamesh have stated how we have a soul, mind, and body. So what happened to Judas' soul? Where did he end up? In the Gospel of Matthew, he accounts in chapter 19 how Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. With this scripture in mind, it is safe to say that Judas, being one of the twelve, is with Jesus, seated on one of the twelve thrones and judging souls that come. Or is he receiving punishment for what he did? Again, this is just one of the many questions that cannot be answered. Arguments have been made in favor of Judas as regards the above scripture, stating that he is definitely on one of the twelve thrones, arguing that Jesus would never have fulfilled his destiny without the betrayal of Judas and how many lives are saved today because of his betrayal. Some theologists even go as far as saying that Judas and Jesus Christ planned it all, knowing what they were doing ever since the Last Supper when it was confirmed that Judas would betray him. Once again, we cannot truly tell. Yes, there are many unanswered questions where Judas is concerned and no matter how many years we postulate, chances are we might never get answers to these questions. What we can do is learn certain things that can be applied to all spheres of our lives. We know now that there were disciples who were around Jesus who did not have a pure heart. Whether it was for a bigger purpose or for selfish reasons, it does not change, they were there. For Judas, it was the opportunity to steal money and maybe more. For others, it could be fame, money, power, or some sort of gain. If it happened to Jesus, it can happen to you too. Not everyone is a wolf and not everyone is a Judas, but be aware, they exist nonetheless. For Judas, we might never know if he truly repented but if we are to go according to the Gospel of Matthew, then we can assume that he did repent. Judas felt remorse for what he did do to Jesus. There is no actual record of him actually repenting, but we do know he felt bad for what he had done. 
The question of how Judas lived has been answered. In some ways, his death has also been answered. The question is now turned to you. How will you live your life? No one wants to be a Judas. Judas definitely did not start out wanting to be a Judas. It's all up to you. If you liked what you have just watched, please like and subscribe. You can also check out more of our videos.